Today we are going to learn the difference between a point of view, a reason and a persuasive technique. What you're looking at on the screen now is a list of all the persuasive techniques that we are going to be learning about. There is a difference between these techniques and someone's point of view and someone's reasons. I'm going to show you now the difference between reasons and persuasive techniques using my tadpole example. My son bought this tadpole home and these were the reasons he gave me for wanting to keep it. So, I really think that we should get a tadpole. And I think that we need to get a tadpole because we don't have one. So if we got a tadpole, then we could say, we have a tadpole, we have a pet tadpole. Um, look, they're really easy to look after. Um, they're very small, very small. So they don't take up a lot of space. Um, they don't smell, they don't shed hair anywhere. You know, wherever we put them, that's where they're gonna be the next time we come to them. Um, they're very interesting to watch because as tadpoles grow, they start to grow their back legs and then their front legs and then they turn into frogs. So we'd be able to learn about the life cycle of a frog from a tadpole into a frog. And um, I've already found a tank that I've been able to borrow from someone. Um, they said that I can use that. And then when he grows up to be a frog, then I can go and let him go out into the natural environment. So I'll be helping the, the frogs of the area to grow and become uh, a bigger population. So I really think that we need to get a pet tadpole. They were his reasons but this is how he tried to persuade me. Oh my God, mum, mum, we so need to get a pet tadpole. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We need a tadpole. I've never had a tadpole before. Don't you want a tadpole? I want a tadpole. Have you ever had a pet before and thought, wow, this is so cool. My friend Xavier, I went to his house and he's given me a tadpole, mum. Can I keep it? Can I keep it? I'm just going to put it over here. We can name it Terry the Tadpole. That has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Every kid should have a pet tadpole. Everyone should have a pet tadpole. They're so cool because you get to watch them grow up and then they go boom and they turn into a frog and you're like, whoa. And I'll be really good. I will, I promise. I'll clean out the tank and I'll look after him and you can trust me to look after him and you won't have to do anything. It'll be so cool. And then I'll be able to tell Xavier all about what my tadpole's doing. And when I go to his house, I see all his tadpoles. He's got heaps. I only want one, I only want one tadpole. It'll be my first real pet. Do you remember when you got your first real pet? I'm so excited. Oh mum, we so need a tadpole. So the point of view was that he wants a pet tadpole. He had clear reasons. We don't have one. They're easy to look after. It doesn't smell or shed. It's interesting to watch. I can learn from it. I've already got the equipment. And then he used these persuasive techniques to try and convince me. Rhetorical questions, alliteration. He appealed to my family values. He used an anecdote. He used inclusive language and he appealed to my values that I wanted him to have as a son. There is a difference between reasons and persuasive techniques. We did keep the tadpole, but he ended up being released into the wild by accident down the drain pipe. We wish him all the best.